ever told you that destroying Earth is a matter of seconds was literally messing with you? Because destroying the Earth is harder than you may have been led to believe. Yes, you see action movies where one man saves the entire world by risking his life from the bad guy's threat of a storm. Or if not that, then you must have definitely heard it on the news of the next nuclear war or cleaning the rainforest or the endless pollution that's leading to climate change and the eventual death of our planet. How cute. Sorry to pop your bubble, but this Earth, it was built to last. This big ball of life is no rose petal, but it's a four and a half billion year old, almost six trillion trillion kilogram ball of iron. It has taken more hits from big ass devastating asteroids in its lifetime than you've had hot dinners or fights with your partner. And yet it orbits merrily as if nothing ever happened. But wait, just because it's hard to kill doesn't mean it's impossible to do so. There are yet ways that science has approved, though, which this big ball of life can actually die. You're watching Top 10, and if you want to know about ways in which the Earth can be destroyed in seconds, then stay tuned till the end of this video and see it for yourself. But before we hop into the details, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends. The situation that most experts imagine here isn't 2 degrees Celsius, 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit warming. Instead, the type of climate negotiators have been battling to maintain a strategic distance from for quite a long time, it's warming of 4 to 6 degrees Celsius or 7.2 to 10.8 degrees Fahrenheit. A really awful situation which is expected to be unbearable for human survival. As indicated by a 2013 World Bank report, there's almost no certainty that adaptation to a 4 degrees Celsius world is possible. Warming at that level would uproot gigantic human displacement as water levels rise and coastal regions get immersed in the water. Farming would have to deal with a humongous hit. Hamlin and Armstrong additionally expressed their stress about geoengineering. In a particularly outrageous warming situation, things like splashing sulfate particles into the stratosphere to cool the Earth may begin to look appealing to policymakers or even private people. Yet the dangers are obscure and Pamlin and Armstrong presume that the biggest challenge is that geoengineering may backfire and simply make matters worse. The great news here is that atomic war could just end mankind under exceptionally uncommon conditions. Restricted trades, similar to the US's bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in World War II, would be a helpful calamity, yet would not be able to wipe out people from the face of the earth. Indeed, even fundamentally bigger trades missed the mark regarding the degree of the effect Parmelin and Armstrong require. Even if the entire populations of Europe, Russia, and the USA were directly wiped out in a nuclear war, an outcome that some studies have shown to be physically impossible given the population dispersal and the number of missiles in existence, that would not raise the war to the first level of impact, which requires 2 billion affected, Pamlin and Armstrong write. So for what reason does atomic war make it on the list? Because of the possibility of nuclear winter. That is, if enough nukes are exploded, world temperature would fall significantly and rapidly, disturbing food creation and conceivably making human existence inconceivable. It is, however, unclear if it's even conceivable or how large a war you'd need to trigger it. However, in case that is a chance, that implies a huge atomic trade is a potential reason for human elimination. Likewise, with atomic war, an extraordinary pandemic qualifies. Past pandemics like the Black Death or the Spanish Influenza of 1918 have slaughtered a huge number of individuals, yet neglected to end the reproduction of human species. The experts are keen on finding a significantly more calamitous situation. Is that conceivable? Medication has improved significantly since the Spanish Influenza, yet on the other side, transportation across huge spans has expanded and more individuals are living in thick metropolitan zones. That makes overall transmission significantly more of a chance. Indeed, even a pandemic that slaughtered off a large portion of mankind would without a doubt leave a couple of survivors who have invulnerability to the illness. The danger isn't that a solitary virus murders everybody, it's that a pandemic executes sufficient individuals that the traces of civilization and agricultural progress as well can't be kept up and the survivors vanish. According to the report, ecological collapse refers to a situation where an ecosystem suffers a drastic, 
possibly permanent reduction in carrying capacity for all organisms, often resulting in mass extinction. Mass extinction can occur for various reasons, a considerable lot of which have their own classifications on this rundown, global warming, an asteroid impact, etc. The writer Elizabeth Colbert has debated on the fact that people might be currently causing a mass extinction event, not because of fossil fuel byproducts like carbon emission. You can't take this back. They are trying to warn us about the future, which is already being determined today. So that is why we need to pay attention. Given that people are intensely reliant on environments, both normal and fake, for food and different resources, mass annihilations that disturb those biological systems under minus two. This is a vague one, but it basically means the world's economic and political systems collapse by way of something like a severe prolonged depression with high bankruptcy rates and high unemployment, a breakdown in normal commerce caused by hyperinflation, or even an economically caused sharp increase in the death rate and perhaps even a decline in population. The paper also mentions other possibilities like a coronal mass ejection from the sun that disrupts electrical systems on Earth. All things considered, it's a bit confusing whether these things would represent an existential danger. Mankind has made do past economic slumps, even huge ones like the Great Depression. A monetary breakdown would need to be impressively more gigantic than that to hazard human eradication or to murder sufficient individuals that the survivors couldn't recuperate. Let us know in the comment box below. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to hit the like button, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to our channel. Make sure you hit the blue icon to stay up to date with our latest videos.